Hi there, Robin here from Expert, and we're back with some more Q&A. Uh, so these are questions and comments that people leave in our videos, and uh, I'm here to talk about them, answer some of those questions, give you a little bit of details. So again, I apologize if I mispronounce, but uh, Jagdam Sound System. Now, he's asking me about uh, Turbo Sound. Okay, so well, there's lots of brands out there, and Turbo Sound is one of these kind of popular requests we get. Uh, we haven't exactly nailed down what we'd like to have or not have. We'd have to see the whole lineup and compare it against some other stuff. But um, maybe we'll see it. But right now, it's just a conversation we're having here. Um, there's nothing wrong with the brand, I guess. I'll be honest with you because I don't have a full, honest opinion on it. So once we get time to go to the showroom and actually listen to these things at uh, Turbo Sound, uh, then we'll come back and make a decision on it. But for now, um, yeah, we're not there yet. Uh, so there you go. So I got a comment from Michael. Uh, Michael's making a thing about, uh, you know, when we're, you know, demoing a PA system or anything and we're doing it into an ambient microphone that is really not getting a lot out of the system. And you gotta understand, my, we're in an evolutionary thing. We've been, you know, 150 videos plus now in less than a year. And uh, my concept here is to try and get you the actual feel for the room. We're constantly refining that. If you listen to one of my first videos, uh, it's really tough. And, you know, we had a lot of comments about the volume and all of that. And we realized we really had to work on that and had more to be of an experience. So that's been our goal here and constantly working on it. And we're trying to make every video a little bit better than the last video and try and really step up our game. Uh, the recipe is important here. I can easily go and get some mics that go right up against the drivers and go, ooh, look at this, it sounds so good or it sounds so bad or whatever not. But it doesn't give you the actual feel in the room. So we're trying to always achieve a better way of making that room feeling, the, the idea of how it would be if you actually came down to our showroom, how it would sound. Uh, are we there yet? No. Are we getting there? We're definitely a lot better than we were, you know, three months ago, six months ago, nine months ago, or a year ago. That is for sure. So uh, I hope you subscribe. Keep an eye on the channel because we're constantly, you know, evolving and trying to make it better. But I appreciate the comment. It always helps. All right. So I've got a question from Barry, and it has to do with the JBL uh, Eon 615. Now, I, I'll throw it out. I'll even add the, the 612 in there as well and everything else in the Eon line. He's asking me, what do I think now that the price point, while well, in the States, is down at $399. Uh, same thing I think about the fact that the price point here uh, is down, uh, down as well in Canada. Uh, if it's a speaker you've been looking at and looking at buying, because it fits in with the, the level of, of power and features that you were looking for, from here to the end of the year is absolutely a great time to buy it. Uh, it puts it in a competitive market to everybody else. That includes, you know, Mackies, Altos, uh, EVs like the ZLX we're talking about. We're talking about the TS3 series. We're talking about the Mackie Dumps. I mean, these are some of the most popular brands out there. Uh, and they were on the top end of the price point. Now they're smack dab right in the middle of all that. And from here to the end of the year, there's no more R&D costing into their products. Uh, it's really, I think for, for them, it's definitely gonna be a cash grab. I don't know if that price is gonna stay if they come out with a new model, if they change their mind uh, in January. But from here to the end of the year, if it fits for what you're looking for, definitely go out and buy it. Now you certainly can't do wrong with the product because I mean, everybody else was inspired by or looked at the ideas that they were doing uh, because these were features that you'd only get on extremely expensive, like $2,000 price point items. Uh, so they did incorporate a lot of that into the Eon, which kind of like got the entire industry rejigging what they're doing at that price. Uh, and of course, everybody had to look at the price because they were the most expensive product you were going to probably buy at that category. Um, so if you're going to DJ for 50 to 150 people, uh, if you're going to PA for, you know, 250 people, uh, if you need an outdoor system, if you need something for uh, other people to use, I mean, that speaker falls in a lot of categories of making people happy. So, again, if it's what you're looking for and it fits in with what you are looking for in a speaker, uh, price is definitely not an issue. It's not like, oh, I bought the, you know, it was a premium buy. It's not anymore. So, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a great way to buy the product. New question from a mobile decay. Now, he's making more of a comment because he's basically saying, 
you know, and, and it's, it's the look of the question, you know, reviewing the products, you're trying to sell me. Hmm. Well, you gotta understand, I, I review the products for features and benefits, and we make our buying decisions here based on those same things. Same reason why you go out and buy something is the same reason why I buy something to put in the showroom, or I buy something to talk about. Uh, it has to do with being able to make it as fair and honest for you to buy the right product. Just because I review it, it's not me telling you to buy it. Uh, it's for me to help you make a decision on buying a product. Uh, do I hope you buy from me? I hope I have something you need. And then in which case you probably might buy something from me. If not, it puts you in the right direction. Uh, not everything is for everybody, or like I've said in many videos, there'd only be one speaker on the shelf. Or, you know, there'd only be Coke on the shelf, there'd be no Pepsi, or there'd only be Budweiser and no, so you know, it goes on and on and on. But that's the point. Uh, I honestly want to give a service when I talk about products. So yes, I do review products and I review products because I think it's helpful. So, but I do appreciate it. Hopefully you subscribe to the channel because then you can see that that's pretty much the way we do things here. So thank you very much, Mobile K. All right, so a question from a lockdown band one. Uh, it has to do with the mixer and it's asking me about the low cut on the input channels, on the line inputs. Uh, basically, uh, when's it engaged? When it's up or down, that sort of thing. Now, remember, if you have the mixer, when you push it down, you're engaging the feature. Now, here you're making point that it's cutting, it's, uh, cutting the highs when pressed. No, it's not cutting, it never cuts the highs. This is a low cut system. So what it's doing is basically cutting the bottom end out. So if you're using it in a studio, uh, it'll cut out all those background noises like from the fans, the air conditioning, the humming around you, that sort of thing. Uh, if you're using it on a stage, maybe you're using it on your main microphones because you're getting a lot of uh, low end feedback from the reverberation of the stage, that sort of thing, or a proximity of some instruments that are giving you some low end feedback that you want to filter out. Uh, so that would be on your main mics, that sort of thing. And you can turn that on. It doesn't cut the highs at all. It's, it's a low, it's called a low cut, 100 hertz, by the way, low cut. So it gets rid of that bottom end. So that's what that feature does for you. So remember, low, not high. Comment from Chucky. So uh, Chucky make reference to the Eon 612 saying he really likes, he thinks the speaker itself looks really great, but he doesn't want to get all bogged down with the app in the back, having to use that all the time to make adjustments. Now it does have a selection that you can set, choose the four preset settings that are in the speaker from the back of the speaker. Uh, it's nice to have the app again at the new price points that those speakers are at. Uh, if you don't use the app, it's not gonna kill you and it's not gonna ruin the sound. It does give you something to play with. So it's an option you can or, or you can use the app or you don't have to use the app. Uh, it'll be up to you. Uh, but you don't have to. It's not an obligatory thing like, oh, I got to, you know, figure this app thing out. Uh, it does have presettings on the back of the speaker. So it's really up to you. Don't be discouraged. It's a good product. And right now it's a really good price point. So I got a uh, two-part question from Adam. So the first one is, and this has to do all in reference to our comparison of the 12 and 15 inch. So uh, I use the ZLX 12P and a ZLX 15P uh, to help you choose, uh, should I get a 12 inch or a 15 inch? And uh, he makes the uh, observation that uh, the 12 inch sounded warmer, fuller, richer at bottom end, that sort of thing. Uh, and I, absolutely, whenever you go into a showroom uh, or using these speakers on a stage, they do sound better when it's a 12 inch. It's not that it's a better speaker, it's just that it's a smaller driver and the blend of sound, how the sound comes off the speaker is just nicer uh, when it's off of a 12 inch or even a 10 inch, depending on the model or brand. Um, when it's up close. The idea of the 15 is to hopefully get a better blend further away. So if you're trying to run a speaker for either a stage or a dance area that's like 20 to 24 feet, uh, that sort of thing, smaller, you know, that kind of thing, um, 12s do a really good job, 10s do a really good job. Uh, but if you need that sound to carry further and you're not, of course, using a big line array of 12s, uh, you know, a 15 will do that because a 15 will fill a dance stage that's let's say 36 by 36 or so carry a little further down into the room before we get a, a drop in db so uh that's the main difference but you are right if you're up close 12s are going to sound really nice uh if you get a chance to listen to a 15 at 30 feet away compared to a 12 you'd probably say that the 15 sounded better thank you again for that question it's a very good question uh and uh, behringer a b18x 
with the turbo sound, sub blah 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 package. Now, I mean they're they're using the technology from one brand to support the other brand, and I think that's it's it's a good thing. Uh, it allows them to build a better product. Uh, but you're also making mention that you're looking at the TS three twelves as a top. So in this case, if I'm going to have three twelves from Alto on top, I stick with the Alto subwoofer on the bottom. Hook, use the DSP setting. You'll save a hundred bucks. And uh, you'll probably get a better combination package together. Uh, you don't necessarily always have to go with the same brand. I, I know that. It's, uh, it's a choice people do or don't do. But in this case, I think the package set will be really, really nice. There we go. So that pretty much covers it for today when it comes to the questions. Uh, if you've got questions or comments, leave them in the videos you're watching or leave them on this particular video here. Uh, try and get back to them as often as I can. And uh, again, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.